Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Heather Havenwood. Welcome to the show. Um, this is where this is the show that helps you in your business, in your life, in your lifestyle, making you more money for all of it. Right? That's what this whole show is about. My name is Heather Havenwood. You can find me on Spotify, iHeart, iTunes, Google Play, Roku, YouTube, all the locations, as well as Twitter. And I'm real big on LinkedIn. Make sure you follow me and all of my different articles there. So I'm going to introduce you to our guest today, Vin Clancy. Vin, are you there? I am here, loud and clear. Loud and clear. Now, by the way, I will tell you, he has a really thick accent, which I absolutely love. I'm going to ask him about it later. But where are you living right now? Uh, I, I'm near Beverly Hills in Los Angeles, your favorite town. <laughs> My favorite town. <laughs> it's not, but that was cute. I love that. So Ben Clancy is an infamous growth hacker that went from being on social welfare, welfare in the UK to winning best speaker at South by Southwest v, V2V, which is another portion of South by Southwest, if you're not familiar with that, for his growth hacking talk, finishing a 100 debate world tour and earning six figures on his debate growth hacking book. Vin created one of the biggest marketing commu communities on Facebook and then moved to LA where he teaches companies how to rapidly grow their audiences and businesses. Vin is on a mission to speak truth to the many lies some internet marketers tell. Oh, hell yeah. He has, he's ready to debunk myths and share growth hacks for any industry. You can find him at acethegame.com. Vin, thanks for being here. It's, it's my pleasure. I, I feel like I, I'm uh, really ingrained in American culture on this show. <laughs> I don't know what that means exactly. That's probably a positive slash negative. Is that like a sly to us? I, 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 I love America. And now I'm being interviewed by someone from Texas. You know, people say the real America. For some reason, California and New York don't count as the real America. And I'm not sure how that works. We are, we are, we are the real America. That's because we have guns here. And <laughs> that's why New York and California don't really have the gun thing going on. We're kind of like the middle America. And uh, yeah, we just, basically Texas has a view that we don't need all of you. We're kind of like the rebels, you know, we don't hey, need you. Austin, Texas is the only time in all my travels in America, I've seen a gun in the wild. A guy had one on his hip just wandering about during South by Southwest. Yeah. That's like a normal occurrence for us. You've never seen that before? No kidding? Never. I've been to like 40 American cities. Austin is the only one. Yeah. You should go to Fort Worth. Fort Worth, that's like a common occurrence. So, <laughs> the, so you and I were talking about how you've been speaking at South by Southwest for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and by the way, if y'all don't know who that is, South by Southwest is a... Wow, how do you describe it? Southwest is just is this unbelievable event that takes over Austin. If you live in Austin, it's a pain in the booty because like everything shuts down. Uh, but uh, people from all over the world come. They speak on marketing. They speak on uh, digital marketing. They speak on uh, film, a lot of independent film. And of course, music takes over for two weeks. So let's, I, I kind of curious, what did you talk about at South by Southwest? So I gave uh, my talk, uh, Growth Hacking, How to Grow Your Company in Real Time. The idea behind that talk is here's 50 things you can do when you leave the room to grow your company. So things like rebump. If you email someone and they don't get back to you, rebump sends an automated email every 24 hours forever. Things like find that lead where you can find anyone's email address from their LinkedIn or their company website. Um, things like um, like social media tools like audience you can scrape all of Twitter and Instagram and find all the influencers by the keyword on their bio and if their email address is in their bio so things like that that you could use instantly to start growing your business not it's six months to learn SEO three months to do a sales course no what you can do right now because of the power of the internet is what I teach about okay so I want to talk about the very first one the email, what'd you say? The reboot, you email every two hours? <laughs> well, you, you can set it to whatever settings you want, but rebump, basically you go and you say, if they don't reply to this email within this set time frame, email them again, and then you can do it again and again and again for as, as long as you want. And that's just, is that a software, rebump? Yeah, it's, it's software. You write in what you want it to send, so you really should use humor or people get a little upset, but... I tell you, like everything I teach, you can get away with so much more than you think. You think people will hate this. The number of replies you get, business inquiries, number of people who apologize to you and say, thanks for following up. I've been so busy, but I did want to speak to you. Can you jump on the call about something we're working on? It's an amazing piece of kit. 
Oh my gosh. Okay. So you have 50 of these growth hacks. Is this in a book? Is this in an article someone can read or can they, do they have to pay you money to get it? How do they get it? So uh, acethegame.com is my new growth hacking book and that has a hundred different techniques and a video course of how to do them click by click. So you're not confused, but they're all very straightforward. But uh, yeah, I've curated everything in the industry, all the pieces of software that save you time, uh, all, all these little techniques like the rebump, like uh, finding anyone's email so that you can get an advantage. So here's one I always tell everyone about. You connect these three pieces of software, they cost like $10 a month. So um, everyone who lands on your website, it grabs their name, their business name, and their email address, and automatically starts emailing them in a drip feed sequence, um, automatically. So you don't do anything. So think about all the people who visit your website you don't know anything about. This will go and find them, and then turn them into leads for you. And then how do you, how does that, so just because I'm coming from email marketing and do a lot of stuff with different email marketing systems, how are you doing that without, without, I mean, how, how are you doing that and grabbing their email without their permission? So, um, so everyone's LinkedIn emails are basically public. Yeah. Um, and this software, if it can't find it on LinkedIn, it will go to their company website uh, where a lot of people have their emails. It will search their Twitter where a lot of people have also put that. So it, it, it will... It's dumps of people and it can't grab anything that's private. If it's not public, so every now and then it, it can't find one. But by and large, all of us as internet marketers, as software people, as startup people, our email is somewhere to be yeah. got. Yeah, and emails nowadays are address, right? You can get so much data. You can get pretty much that I'm a female, where I live, you can see my age. You can get uh, different kinds of data just based on knowing someone's email and getting the data. I think that's, some people don't realize that. They go, well, they need, to, they need to know my name. They need to know my address. Nope. Your email address, sweetheart, is like your social security number. <laughs> so it's like you get someone's email, scrape the email, and then you get the data from that. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. So like, another common thing people do is um, they, once you have your email address, you can run the custom audience Facebook ads directly to that email. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. so, so, one, so if you've been on a sales call with someone, something my friend Josh recommended recently, uh, you, can, you can put testimonial adverts only targeted to the people you've been on the phone with. So by the next time you speak to them, they're pre-sold. Okay, that's really cool, by the way. Let's, let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restate what you said, okay? Just basically restate it. So what he's trying to say, what he's saying is that you said you're on the phone call with like 10 or 15 or 20 people. You have their email address. You've been in conversation with them. They say no for whatever reason. You're basically uploading to a list on Facebook to either do what I call a, a targeted campaign, almost like a retargeting, but a really targeted campaign. And yeah. then you're pre-selling them with testimonials and different things. Am I yeah. accurate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. It's brilliant. It's a pre-sell frame. So they're seeing you. They've been off the phone with you for whatever reason. They say no for whatever reason, but now they start seeing you everywhere. It's kind of a retargeting. And next yeah. thing you know, it's in the top of brain, top of mind, which is a pre-sell, which is a pre-frame to the sell. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 100%. That is super hot. Oh my gosh. Okay. Ooh, this is good. It's a good stuff. I love that kind of stuff. It's like, I love like di dirty strategy stuff. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this is good. Yeah, that's, okay. that, that's what I get. You, you, can, you can go so far within the terms of service for everything that most people won't. Um, but that's the spirit of American hustle. This, exactly. The American hustler, man. I, I'm definitely the American hustle girl, like female hustle. Okay. So can you tell us any more? Can you expand here? Cause we don't really have set questions today. We're just like here having a conversation. Okay, um, well, tell me um, what your typical audience member does and I'll throw out some hacks and ideas. Yeah, sure. So I think that most of my, my listeners are either people that want to start a business or they have what I call a local business, you know, chiropractor, dentist, whatnot, or a lot of people I have on, on the show have e-com businesses, a lot of e-com businesses that maybe they're, they're prisoned. These are their words. They're prisoned to Amazon. That's what they feel like. Cause that's where all the traffic comes from. And they're scared to kind of either go off um, onto their own store, Shopify or whatnot, because they're afraid that the traffic's not going to convert. And the problem with Amazon, as you know, these are their words that, um, you don't get the customer data. You can't really control the customer necessarily, right? So what, what would you say to that growth hack on that? Well, let me knock that on the head. Uh, when, Sweet. When, <laughs> when you're running Amazon traffic, 
um, one thing you want to do is send them not directly to Amazon, but to a squeeze page where you'll give them a bonus or cash back or something if they give you their email address. So you put a page between the Facebook ad or the Google ad and the Amazon where they give you their email address and then you get that data before the next page. So now, now you own that customer. You get a slight drop in conversion to people who are bouncing off, but the data is worth so much that it solves that problem. The, the second way of solving that is to put a leaflet inside the box of the thing you're sending out with a discount if you refer a friend or feature, but you have to register, give them email. So that, that's two ways of solving that first problem. Um, regarding, uh, generally speaking, how people in e should launch new products, there's a new website called Angage, A-N-G-A-G-E. Uh, this is phenomenal. So what they do is they're, they're watching trends of products worldwide. Uh, so you can see what products are about to be hot, what products are people a lot of buying. They can help you source the products. And I've heard a rumor, but I haven't used it, so I can't say for sure. I've heard a rumor they have the pixel sets of people who have bought that product from Facebook that you can then use for your Facebook ads. So, okay, could you say the URL one more time? Angage, A-N-G-A-G-E, I think it's .net. A-N-G-A-N-G-A-G-E. -G -G -E. A -A -G -G -E. -G -E. Like engage with an A at the start. Oh, uh, okay, cool. That's really super hot. That's, I'm, gonna, I'm Googling that right now. That's yeah. super hot because as you know, lots of times with the Amazon that from what I understand again, of course, is that they don't get the data. They don't really know what's trending, what's not trending. So yeah, Engage has a lot of uh, what's trending on the e-com side. Uh, Amazon ads are still uh, undervalued, but people are, people are still generally doing Facebook ads so that there's still a lot of opportunity in there. Um, and, uh, I, and so like this, this is just an, a microcosm of, um, so wh whatever area you're doing, there's a lot that can be said for this. So if you're running a local business, uh, and let's say you want to do Facebook ads or social media, you just need to do a risk reversal. So you run local Facebook ads to get in front of them, or you cold email, you use find their email to find their emails. And then you say, uh, let me work on your local business. Um, I'll work for the first week or first two weeks for free. If you think it's great, then we carry on. And then there's no risk for them to take it on. If local businesses have never done things like Facebook ads, they get extraordinary results. In fact, that's the number one, the guys, who teach you how to do ads, they never say work with entrepreneurs or coaches. They say work 100% with local businesses. People like dentists and doctors have big budgets. They, they never know how to get customers. They don't even have a referral scheme in place. Um, and they will pay you if you bring them customers. And so things like that, that, that's where the opportunity is for local ads and Facebook ads. It's basically going after the local small business, like the local, local chiropractor, doctor. Um, yeah, that, yeah, I agree with that. They have real budgets and the challenge with them is they don't really think about hiring a full CMO, you know, or chief marketing officer. Um, but the moment you start, they start seeing dials, you know, the people calling in, they're like, we love you. We'll continue to purchase from you forever. Right. Um, yeah. that's so accurate. <laughs> no idea. And there's a, there's a ton of there. So, okay. So let's say people e-commerce, let's just kind of review it real quick. Right. So e-commerce, we talked about and engage. I'm going to give you the URL. I just found it online. Here it is. A N is a Nancy G A G E dot net. That is the, um, the, the site he was referring to. Um, and so basically you're saying, hey, go ahead and use it from, from a media to a squeeze page, get their email so you have that data and then drive them back to the shop, Shopify store and or Amazon, is that right? Yeah. Cool, and then anybody who's doing an agency model would be focusing on small local businesses. So let me ask you this, you're, are you a, what's your business? Are you a speaker, more of a speaker and you're, you're paid to grow people's businesses? What's your business model? So yeah, I, I am paid to grow people's businesses, but um, I'm generally I, I do private enterprise deals that I don't yeah. talk about, which are like six figures. Uh, I, I very occasionally take on smaller companies, but um, I prefer to teach um, and show people how to do this stuff because it scales a lot more. So I can do a webinar with 20 people paying me X and then I can give them advice one to one rather than working on one project to market one person's business. 
So it's, it's not any easier than any other business, but I love the information model. So you yeah. put out content, you build a community, and then you ask for leads, and then you sell info products. Um, I, I, I love that model. Like before I was an entrepreneur, my only jobs that I sucked at them was like cold calling, telesales. Like, and, and, that's, and like, that's the last thing you want to do as an entrepreneur. If people haven't heard of you and you're trying to sell to them, their back is up uh, and they just want you to leave. So like, I, I always wanted to have people know, like, and trust me before I ask uh, for anything in return. And I think not enough people do that still. And what is that model you said? You said it really quickly. You said, it, so it's building the community. Yeah. So I, I still believe for, for most niches, for like targeting people who are millennials or Gen X, which is the majority of people who have budget to spend, um, I still believe building a Facebook group is the best way of doing it. Because mm -hmm. most, although the numbers are, are now declining fairly sharply for Gen Z, for people who are in business and are the older demographic, everyone is still on Facebook all day. No one escapes it. So by building a Facebook group, you can build a community of people who are interested in what you're talking about and you don't have to pay Facebook like you do a Facebook page. Your right. Facebook page will not get seen by anyone unless you grow it. A Facebook pages, in a way, they're kind of toxic to the small business community and that's why we don't do much with them. Even Instagram, we can grow pretty fast without paying any money, but Facebook pages are just dead up. So, so I would say build a Facebook group, uh, invite all of your relevant connections in. You can invite all of your LinkedIn contacts. You can export all your LinkedIn contacts and invite them by email. Uh, and like entrepreneurship is lonely. So people love these groups to connect with people. It has to have a strong reason to exist. But if you show up every day with two or three different ideas and articles um, and you aggressively invite people by email, you'll soon have hundreds of people waiting to hear from you every day. The easiest way to find content, if you don't know where to look, is go on Reddit and search in the top right of Reddit. Reddit is like a group of forums. Mm -hmm. uh, and every day, other people post what's hot in your industry, whether it's fashion or music or construction. Everything is on Reddit. You can find ideas there, and you'll never run out of things to post about in your group, or, or indeed, if you build your community on Twitter or Instagram, likewise. Oh, I love that. Sometimes I run out of ideas, right? I'm like, I want to write an article. Where in the hell do I go? I'm looking at a blank piece of paper. You know what I mean? I don't know if you've experienced that. I do. It's like blank piece of paper. Oh my God. So you're saying go to Reddit. Can you, like go, can you just share a little bit more about that? Yeah. So Reddit has ev every, every forum in the world exists on Reddit. So whatever you're searching, you just, there's, a, there's a search bar in the top right and you just type it in business, entrepreneur, um, bicycles, like whatever it is, there's a subreddit for it. And there are people posting every day, hey, have you seen this? Hey, have you seen this? Uh, so they, they post the ideas for you. Like uh, I, I could take anyone off the street and uh, within a month have them a Facebook group with a thousand people in it for free who are, who are engaged in what you're doing just using this method. And if they have a LinkedIn with relevant contacts, I can invite in. Um, so it's, it's super easy to find that content um, and uh, I have a few guides I give away with the book as well like here are some headlines that will get people to open your emails. Uh, here's the top 50 most engaged posts from our Facebook group. So we've had over 50,000 people in our group. Um, like our group's so active we delete anyone who doesn't like, comment or share our posts. Like we, we, we only want the hardcore it's better to have a small tribe who love you than uh, hundreds of thousands who don't. And they share your, they share, do you allow the Facebook group, do you allow people to share the article in the group, outside the group? Yeah, so we, we do something not a lot of groups do, and that's our group is public. Um, a lot of people have private groups, so when you're in a niche like relationship counseling or, or personal stuff, it's better to do private. But we've always wanted to be mainstream. Uh, we've always wanted to be a big group. Uh, we've had articles that have been there, been featured and discussed in places like BuzzFeed. So we always want it to be mainstream um, and something that anyone could pick up um, because it's, it's a resource that does make the world a better place. If people can grow their businesses, they've got time and energy to uh, spend with their families or do things that give back.
Okay, so you have, a, that's interesting because a lot of people I know do the private because they want to have that interaction, that safe space. So what you're saying is like make it public, create the community, but then, but then you do something unique. You kick off people that don't share or like, is that right? Yeah, so whatever platform you're on, um, if you have ghost followers, they bring your, what's known as your page rank down. Um, so if, so all the social networks, they show your post to a few people, if they engage, they show it to a few more and a few more and a few more. It's like the lady with the Star Wars mask. How in the hell did she with 200, do, do you know what I'm talking about? No. She had, a, she had this, one of the monsters from Star Wars and she spoke through it. Uh, if you look this up, you, your listeners will definitely know it. Uh, she had like 200 friends on Facebook, but people just kept sharing it because it was so funny to see this woman with this Star Wars mask Oh, on. I know, you talked about the video and she was laughing. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So how in the hell can something like that be mainstream and end up on CNN and so on? That's because a few people shared it, a few people shared it. So what that means is if you have people who don't engage with you, then Facebook thinks, or Twitter or Instagram says, oh, this person doesn't have good content. Um, let's not share it with anyone else because it'll be a drag. So uh, you, you, it's, it's a good idea to kill um, anyone who's not engaging with you. So, you, so you're, you're killing them on their personal or you're killing them on the community? I'm killing them in the community, but I'll, I'll share another hack, which okay. may or may not go down well in middle America. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's not middle America. This is international. So, I, I mean, my, my main Facebook is my business. Uh, I mean, I don't really have a personal life, and that's a whole other thing we can talk about. But uh, <laughs> if someone talks about politics, Trump, guns, um, or negative stuff, uh, I look at their profile. If it's, if it's an entrepreneur profile and they just happen to be talking about this as a one-off and the rest of it's about entrepreneur and business, they may remain. If they may conceivably buy something from me in the future, they may remain. But you always get friend requests from people who add little value. Uh, yeah. Most people moan, most people don't do all that much. Uh, and really, it's about being in touch with your emotions. I know if I see a lot of those posts, I'll be triggered uh, and it'll make me less productive. So, um, so I'd rather get those people out of my feed and then use my good energy to help people grow their businesses. You know? Yeah. No, I completely agree. I stay away from politics on all stands. So you're saying basically have the kinds of, let's call them friends for sake of conversation with yeah. you know, Facebook of people that you're connected to, friends, that are only going to add energy to you, you add energy to them, versus yes. just having a number of friends. I, I love that model. That's super and, and if you can't unfriend them, you can just unfollow them so they don't show up in your feed and they don't get angry at the family. I game. do that all the time. I unfollow without them knowing I unfriended them. <laughs> yeah, it's like, they can, it's like a buzz kill. They're completely buzz killing to your own energy and it doesn't serve you whatsoever. So talking about personal life, I, you, I, I have to grab that because that was yeah. too juicy. Um, I can relate, but I'm curious what you meant by you don't have a personal life. So um, I was on a podcast this morning and he asked, have you done a deal with the devil uh, to be successful as you are? Um, and uh, it's, it's, a really, it's an interesting question. Like to, to be successful in business, um, it, it really takes more than you realize. And in fact, the, the deeper in I've got, the harder I realize it is. It's not like my skills have made it easier to do all this stuff. So, um, so yeah, so I started Planet Ivy and I had no social life. Then I became a agency guy. Uh, I'll, I'll go through. Yeah, go through, yeah, my journey, through, but, um, go through your, go through your transformation process, you know? So, um, so if we rewind back to 2011, um, I was, um, uh, on welfare, so on social welfare, living off, uh, 71 British pounds a week, so about a hundred dollars, living in a house with, uh, water coming from the roof, flatmate who took drugs and ate all my food. <laughs> I don't know why I laugh when I say that, it was, it was bad at the time. Um, so that house, uh, got threatened, I got threatened by the mafia in that house because they wanted me to squat there illegally. Got out of that, was homeless, lived with my girlfriend uh, for about three weeks. They got me another place, um, and that was like a 300 square foot apartment. The heating broke right away, and uh, then I called them up and said, hey, it's cold, it's England, uh, I, I need heating. And they said, well, the building's being demolished soon, so we're not gonna bother, and they hung up. So then I had to get an electric heater, which 
I don't know if you've ever had electric heater, they eat electricity if you plug them into the wall, um, which wouldn't have been so bad, but they didn't trust me to uh, pay my electric bill, so it came on a chip that you had to walk to the convenience store to put money on, or it died. And we didn't have any gas in the house, so we had an electric cooker, so the cooker would turn off halfway through food, and I'd have to run down the road to put money on it. So that's where I was in 2011. 2011? In 2012, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, so 2012, that, that's where I was when I decided to launch an online magazine. So I never really had a job before. I'd been out of work <laughs> over a year. Um, like, uh, so yeah, so I, I had zero money, and then I had this idea of starting an online magazine. Uh, it came to me in a dream, believe it or not. The next day, I bought a domain, planetiv.com, as in Planet, like it was going to be a world news website content, and then Ivy, like viral growing. Got a 17-year-old kid, he built a website. Uh, within six months, we had 300,000 visitors a month. Within a year, we had a million visitors a month, all uh, obviously done for free. I had no money, I was on welfare. And then I got a check for a quarter million dollars, and then I, I was off welfare the next day. So that's where it all began, and that's 2013. Then um, we got to a second cycle, that's a million visitors a month in 100 days. Got into the Techstars Accelerator ahead of 1,500 other companies. Um, then I started public speaking, one best speaker at South by Southwest B2B three months after starting public speaking. I've never done it before. Uh, worked with the Royal Family, did my 100 date world tour, and then got my 01 Extraordinary Ability Visa and moved to America last summer. And now I'm here. And now you're here. So, so there's a huge step there, right? So talking about the Planet Ivy, how did you get the check for a quarter million dollars from Planet Ivy? So, um, so on day one, I, I read a book which changed my life. It's called The 48 Laws of Power by Robert. Yes, yeah. yes I have it right next to me. Yes. Yeah. Incredible book. And there was a chapter in it that said, get other people to do the work for you, but always take the credit. Um, and so I was like, I can't write all these articles uh, for Planet Ivy. So I called up every university and college in the country and said, I'm building this great site. It'll be uh, a, a great place to write. I'll give you editorial feedback. You know, you'll get a platform. It's going to be a cool site. Uh, and so other people started writing the articles for me. One article in 10 to 15 went viral. Uh, so I had hundreds of writers contributing. I, I mean, I had 500 even even while I was on welfare, I had 500 people contributing, a team of editors editing it as well. So we had that content, and then I learned how to make it go viral on social media and social news sites. So, so then we had, so if you go to a venture capitalist and say, look, in the last month, last three months, we've had a total of a million visitors, that looks like it's the next Huffington Post. And, and that's what we went with. And then, yeah, and then it continued to grow after we got investment, and we got, it to, we got the sites to 2 million visitors a month in the end. Um, so that, and that's how we raised two rounds of money, just under half a million dollars. So that, that was my beginning as an entrepreneur. And it was a, a brilliant experience because um, it taught me some fundamentals I've used in all my businesses. Uh, you need to get it out the door before it's ready. Like the longer you take, the less uh, it works. You need to constantly get feedback and improve on it. Um, you can do a lot with very little resources because of the internet. Um, and... Um, the story is almost more important than the product. That will eventually bite you on the ass, but um, yeah, like being able to tell the story of your product is key, and I've used that in all my businesses. That's pretty interesting. So I'm look, I just went to planetivy.com and it clicked me through to your site, Vin, Vin Clancy. So is Planet Ivy still around today? No, uh, we, we, we decided to focus on other things. Okay. But also, like in terms of when we started, it was possible to to have a site and make a living from banner ads. Yeah. Uh, Facebook killed that. All the ad money rightfully went to Facebook because the targeting was better. But yeah, like 2012, 2013, 2014, when we were doing it, um, we were getting like 20 pounds CPM for an ad. So every thousand visits, we get 20 pounds and we could have two or three of those ads. So the money was really good. And that's all changed. That's why you focus now, not on that model, you focus on Facebook. Yeah, well, also I led into, um, like, my personal brand is my strongest asset, too. Um, so that, that works really well. Speaking and writing, I'm the best in the world at. Everything else I'm pretty good at. I'm pretty good at marketing and uh, so that. But speaking and writing, no one can touch me. So being able to lean into what you're good at is key and then build around that, which is why I mainly sell information now. 
Um, I, I actually make more from my agency, but uh, I, I love having an audience. I love like, I showed up in Montreal a while back and over 300 people were there to watch me speak. It's just crazy. That's crazy. That's awesome. And you have an agency. Well, how can people work with you? Um, they can, they can beg me. <laughs> uh, just uh, get in touch on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, support at vingclancy.com. But I, I, I rarely take on people. Sometimes I do. Um, but yeah, I, I take on interesting things. Uh, I sometimes help launch Kickstarters. Um, so yeah, I, I do a lot of different things, social media, uh, email list growth. Um, but uh, I, I recommend people start with acethegame.com. There's a, they can get a group coaching with me that's a lot cheaper than hiring me, and that's going to be most of the answers. I, I'm a big fan of the CEO being the head of growth and learning it. Because what most people do is they don't learn how to do it, and then they hire a Facebook ads guy and they get ripped off because they don't know what they're doing. Got it. Yeah. So acethegame.com. That's acethegame.com. Check him and um, check that out. And I'm looking at that. It looks like um, this is about growth hacking bundle, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's the main thing. You'll get the video course, the digital book, and a ton of bonuses, things like 4,000 podcasts you can go on, uh, email subject lines, uh, how to work with influencers, how to build chatbots. So every area, if you're like, I don't know which to go on. Um, there's going to be something in here that will fundamentally change your business. So, like, literally, guarantee, I guarantee it'll change anyone who does its business. That's hot. That's super sexy. Super awesome. Super sexy. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap it up because we are kind of out of time, even though I definitely can talk to you for a long time. So, I just wanted to wrap it up with you and ask you know, other than going to acegame.com, how can people connect with you, work with you, socialize with you online? Um, so, uh, my Facebook group's called Traffic and Copy. Um, Vin Clancy is my Facebook page and my Facebook name, so you can add me there. Uh, if you want to add me as a friend, Vin Clancy LA is how you'll search me. Um, yeah, and just message me, support at vinclancy.com. Uh, I will get to all of those messages as well. Oh, love that. That's awesome. Well, thank you for so much for being here. I'm super intrigued by what you're doing, super creative. Whenever you're in South by Southwest in Austin, Love to buy you coffee or <laughs> buy you growth hack. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Uh, everyone check him out at acethegame.com. This is Heather Havenwood. You can find us on Spotify, iHeart, Google Play, as well as iTunes and Roco. We will see you soon. This is Heather Havenwood. Bye.